This is an image of police in April of 1933. They're, they're executing a raid, a search and seizure, you know, of a, a historically Jewish neighborhood in Berlin. And what we see here, this is a large operation. You know, these are all police officers. It's not a, this isn't a mixture of the police and the military or pl the police and the Nazis. These are all German police officers. And they're, they're in their new riot gear. Uh, remember, um, when Hitler com comes into power, he what he's doing is he, he wants to make sure that the police have their new resources. So they're given that. They're given, you know, more funding all of that. So this shows here, when they're executing this raid, they're told that they're looking for unlicensed weapons, wanted criminals, um, undocumented immigrants, and subversive literature. And when you think of that, uh, just say, a police officer, uh, when I ask this question, I ask them, you know, how might a police officer interpret that order? We are looking for uh, weapons, criminals, you know, uh, people that don't belong here, and uh, subversive literature. Oh, cleaning up the streets. Because this neighborhood had a reputation as, as being a slum, you know, with high crime. And it had been a long-standing frustration for the Berlin Police Department. So they're getting these orders, and they may look at this as they're finally being able to do their jobs. They've been given the, the tools that they need, They've been given the people that they need. They've been given the orders that they've been craving. Clean up the streets, make, the, you know, make this neighborhood safe. Make people feel safe. So one of the things that happens from this is the police, it, it's re being reinforced to them that the people that live here, they're criminals. This creates that us versus them dynamic. They don't belong here. They're not a part of our community. So it, it, this doesn't only have that effect with the police. Because just say, an ordinary German citizen opens up the newspaper, sees this scene. What they see is, hey, the police don't show up like that to the good neighborhoods. Those people must have done something. Why might they believe that? It's because they trust the police. The police are legitimate. The police have the authority. The, the police have training. Also, when Hitler comes into power, he says, hey, we're, I'm going to make you safe. One of the things that changes of what the police are looking for is that subversive literature. Because what this begins to do is it, it's tying uh, Jews with a, a, a communist you know, uh, takeover. So if, if, they're seen, if Jews and communists are seen as one and the same, this right here, it, it almost justifies the, this level of force and this level of presence here. Think of this, February 27th, 1933, the German parliament building, the Reichstag, uh, was burned down. Hitler was able to uh, persuade President Hindenburg, as well as the public, that this was a part of a larger communist plot to overthrow the German government. With that in mind, once this neighborhood is, is is raided, when the police get the orders that they're looking for criminals, uh, 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 weapons, and uh, people that, you know, undocumented immigrants, as well as subversive literature. This right here is what ties the event of the Reichstag fire and this, the people that live in this neighborhood here. This is, wasn't something that was, you know, just, uh, by, by happenstance. This was something that was planned. This was to, to demonize or to criminalize the people that live in this community here. So not only would the police connect the people that live in this community with the events of the Reichstag fire, the German citizens, the ordinary German citizens that would see this, would, would, would create or find that type of connection.